What's up everybody, it's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be another Luminar AI video. This time we're going to look specifically at templates. Now templates are Luminar's term for presets basically and it's where they've gone ahead and done a whole bunch of different effects and you take an image and hit it with all these effects at once. And they're super powerful, but I'm going to show you how to create your own. We'll talk about how to use theirs, but then I'm also going to show you how to create your own and some pitfalls to avoid when you are making your own templates. If you don't already have Luminar yourself, there is a link in the description where you can find it. I'll also give you a discount code that you can use to get a discount on the software. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll take a second to subscribe to the channel. Help me reach my goal of 1 billion subscribers. It could happen. But without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here's the image that I'm going to use for this tutorial. thought this would be a good one because it's got a whole bunch of different elements and it's kind of a flat, sort of a bland color palette. thought it would be a, a really good one to show off how far we could stretch it and uh, how the different templates would apply to it. So first thing I want to do, of course, is I want to do this on its own layer. Um, and I'm just going to drag that down here. I do this so that if I decide that I don't like the effect or it's too strong or I want to go back and replicate it later, um, I kind of know what I'm doing. So right now I'm just going to put LUM for Luminar. Uh, once we decide what template to use, we'll come back, hopefully, and remember to change that to the template name and uh, that'll be even better. So I think we're ready to go. Let's jump into the software and go to AI. Okay, so here we are in the software and it kind of defaults here to the template and uh, you can see over here it's got the suggested templates that uh, they're saying for this image would be good and all the other templates and um, obviously we could just go through and pick some of these templates and apply them but what we're going to try to do here today is create our own I mean this is the easy part going through and just picking one um, and sometimes it doesn't even have to be you know maybe one of these portrait ones you could apply to this um, so it doesn't have to be one of the uh, cityscape ones necessarily. Um, I've found that sometimes I'll just go through and try different ones and you just never know how it's gonna affect each image. That's just something you kind of do when you're playing around. Um, we're gonna try and create our own this time. By the way, um, if you haven't noticed this before, you can click down here on get more templates and it will pop up. It'll basically take you to the Skylum website where you can find more of these templates that you can download if you uh, wear yourself out on these. So just an option if you're looking for tons and tons of uh, templates, that's a place to add more. But we're going to try and create our own today. So we're going to go to Edit. So what we'll do here is just run through them and make all the tweaks we want to this image and then turn that into a template. So uh, let's start with Enhance. And again, we're not going to do this on all of them, but just as you're running through these, if you don't know what a particular one does, you can just slide it all the way over, um, give it a second to work, and then you'll kind of see the before and after. You click on the little eye up here, and there's the before and the after. So it gives it a nice little look there. I don't know that we need that much. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. I like adding the accent and the structure. Structure seems to me to give it a little more kind of a sharpening type things. So we're going to give it a little bit of that. There we go. And some of these others, you know, you can just kind of skip through them. Details isn't such a big deal. We could go through and add a little bit of small detail just because there's some smaller things in here. Sometimes I'll tweak that small detail a little bit just to bring out a little bit more of it. Under the landscape, I like using this golden hour sometimes to uh, just kind of give it an overall warm. The foliage enhancer works as well. Um, for bringing out some of those greens in an image like this. And you can again see that before and after. It's definitely already giving it a bunch more punch. Um, the vignette generally is, is helpful as well. Um, let's try just pulling this down a little bit. See what kind of a vignette it gives us. The subject here in the center. Just a little bit. Again, we'll go before and after. That finish first. It's a subtle vignette, but I think that helps a little bit. Okay, so we go into creative now. Now, we don't have a whole lot of sky opening up here. 
and you can look through here and you see it's grayed out. I'm guessing that is because it doesn't realize there's any sky visible. So you're not going to be able to access sky or augmented sky, um, which is fine. We don't necessarily want to do that here. One thing to keep in mind with the skies is you're going to almost always have to change skies from image to image. So if I were to add a sky to this one and then save the template, uh, it's not necessarily going to be the same sky that I want on the next image. So a lot of times I won't add a sky. If I know it's a template that I'm going to be saving, um, sometimes I won't add the sky. The problem is it's so much easier to get that sky to blend in with the image if you do it at the very beginning before you start doing all the shifting. Because if you change all this contrast and color and all these things and then add in a sky, I'm not sure how much of that is going to affect the sky. So I like to put that sky in first so that as I'm tweaking everything, I'm also seeing how the walls and the ground and everything look relative to that sky that I added, if that makes sense. So um, from a realism standpoint, it, it's good to put that sky in early, um, in my opinion. But um, for a template, I kind of like to leave the sky out and uh, deal with it on the back end. And again, in this situation, we don't really have a sky, so it's it's not a big problem. You know, you could do things like sun rays and things like that, um, bring in those light, beams of light. But again, it's kind of a flat scene here, so we're not going to mess with that. You can go to dramatic, and dramatic, you know, does this thing where it, we zoom it all the way up, you can see it kind of desaturates it and sharpens it all at once, makes it super contrasty. But I, I tend to like a little of it because I think it gives it kind of a, um, starts looking less and less photographic in a good way. And so uh, I like to give a little bit of that dramatic sometimes. We're not going to worry with some of these things like mystical. Um, you could do some film grain, but let's keep on trucking through here. There's not going to be anything in portrait. But pro, um, a lot of times the super contrast is a fun one to play with because you can go through and work things individually. You know, we can try and tweak some of the highlight areas. We've got a lot of midtones here. So I'm going to really kind of tweak this mid-tone slider. And you can see, you can push it all the way up and kind of see what it does. Bring it all the way back. I kind of like what that's doing. I'm going to bring that a pretty good amount right through there. All right. You can do things. You've got in here like the um, clone stamp, which is handy if you've got something that you want to um, get rid of. Let's say, for example, this, um, I don't know what you call it, like a, a, a plate on the ground there. You can just click an area here and then just come right over here and I probably need to make that a little bit smaller. And you can just kind of erase it away like that. And um, that's kind of a nice thing to do to get rid of some uh, elements that you don't want in an image, just as an example. Uh, things on the wall, like for example, I might not want um, this uh, hole right here, so I'm going to hold down my option key here, pick a new point, and just take that out. And you could really go, to, I mean, you could do it down here, you could take out some of this stuff, depends on how much you want to do. Um, I think this is going to be a little more complicated because of the step. So I probably won't try and use this for that. If I was going to take that out, I'd probably do it in Photoshop just because I'm more comfortable using it that way. But I'm pretty happy with what we have right here. And um, you can go back through if you want and see uh, by clicking right here on this before after. And it's a very dramatic difference. I, I think this has a, a much richer look to it. Then this just looks really flat. This has a lot more punch to it. So I'm happy with what we've got there. It's just kind of warmed up this, um, this city street. So um, we can come down here to template and go ahead and hit save. Then what you will do is go back to templates and on this little star, the My Collection, we're going to go under User Templates. Here it is right here, template name. And we're going to change that to... Um, Let's just call it Warm Streets. And so then we can bring up other images, go right to User Templates, Warm Streets, and it will apply all these same settings. The nice part is, once we've applied all those settings, we can come back in here and you'll see a dot next to everything that you used. So for example, we used um, the detail slider. So you can click on that and it, it will show you this. So if you come into the next image and go, oh, that's too much, I don't want that small detail, you can come back and tweak it 
um, however you want. So you're not bound by any of these things if you get to the next image and it doesn't quite work right. But I'm pretty happy with that with this warm street. So let's go ahead and hit apply. Now here's where first thing back I always try to remember to go back and change this to warm streets. And this comes in handy. Again, maybe I've got a different scene from the same city that I think I'd like to use it as a jumping off point. Um, so that's why it's nice to have that name. Uh, it could also be really good if I was working on a smaller JPEG here just for ease of use. And at some point I realized I wanted to have a you know, 50 by 50 of this image and I had to start over from the raw file with a bigger file, I'd be able to go right to here and uh, recreate this look much more easily than what I have. Now, it may not look exactly the same on a bigger file. Some of those things, uh, you know, sharpening may affect it differently and all that, but at least it will get me in the ballpark. And like I said, the best reason I like having these separate um, is because there's the before and after, it's pretty good, is you can always go back if you decide that's too much and bring down that opacity. Now one thing you'll have to keep in mind is as you do that you may start getting at some of these things you cloned out may start reappearing if you do that. So it's really best to to do this in the software in Luminar versus doing it at this point. But um, especially if you haven't done any cloning this is kind of a nice way if you do it the next morning you look at it and go that's too over the top you can pull it down a little bit. And if you have to you just go back and clone those out or the, the things that you removed. So it's not the end of the world if you have to do that but pretty happy with how that looks. And as you can see, rather quickly, you can build up a library of your own templates that reflect the type of look you want. You know, so many times when you're going through templates, you're like, oh, that's, I would never want that type of effect to one of my images. I just, it's just too garish or it's too subtle, whatever. This kind of allows you to build up stuff according to your style and the type of images you shoot. You know, you'll probably tend to shoot a lot of the same types of scenes and uh, the same types of lighting conditions and things like that. And so it's kind of nice to have things tailored to your particular style. So as you can see, the templates really are a great time-saving shortcut, especially if you can keep organized and make sure and label them in a way that you know which one you're using for which type of image. It will really help to uh, dial in on a specific look you like. And once you get that look, apply it to other images, uh, which it'll also probably work for. If you don't already have Luminar, you can download it from the link below and there is a discount code you can use, Larry Photo, which will give you a discounted price on the software. But that's all we got for this week. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.